Hey guys, this is Jeff here in Fort Wayne, Indiana with JustPoleBarns.com. You are thinking about putting up a pole barn. I want to help you with three big things. And those three things are going to be the footprint of your barn, the features of your barn, and the future of your barn. Okay, so let's talk about it. Hey, so the first thing I want to talk about is the footprint of the building. And that really has to do with how much real estate do you have to give up in your yard? If you're out in the country on 10 acres, go for it. You got plenty of room. Build yourself the 80 by 120. But the way you can really determine the footprint is walk it out. Go out in the yard, get a couple flags, get a couple sticks or whatever you have laying around there and get that rolling tape or get your measuring tape and just flag that thing off. Look at your home. Think of how and where you want to orient that building. Basically, if you're going to push it far away from your driveway, you're going to incur an additional cost for additional driveway work, more gravel, more excavation to get there. You're going to have to think through with the building and permitting process of potential setbacks, depending on where you live, if you are a little bit restricted in the space. But that's the first way to do it is just consider if you're going to do a square, you're going to do a rectangle, you're going to do a T shape or L shape, or you want it as close to your house as possible. Those are all items. Just consider what is the footprint of my building going to look like. Okay. Secondly, the features of your barn, the windows that you want, the doors that you want, the style of doors, the color of doors. Are you going to put gutters on that building? Are you going to do a loft? something like that, that you would want windows later on. As you think those things through, some of those items are very inexpensive and you can take what tends to be kind of an average pole building and you can add a handful of items for a little bit of money that will really help to increase the aesthetic value. I definitely recommend people to think through the features of their barn. If it's going to be oriented closer to their home, think through the colors and you can typically try to match the colors of your home. I ask people all the time, what are the windows that you have on your home? If you have single hung or double hung windows in your house that are opening up and down, why not just do that in the building? This way you have a consistency on your property. It actually adds in to the value as you go to resell because people will feel that everything has a continuity to it. So the average window is going to be a sliding window or gliding window that opens back and forth. You're going to think through the overhang of the building. That's a feature that most people just say, give me a one foot overhang. But if your home for some reason has a larger overhang, it's literally maybe a few hundred dollars extra. Why not just bump that out? The overhang also serves a purpose. The further that roof line goes out, the better it's going to be to shed water and keep water away from the posts in your building. The other features, do you want an overhead door? An overhead door is simply a garage door. It's going to be either motorized or on a string and open up and down. That door is going to seal tightly onto concrete. If you will do an overhead door on one end and then a sliding door on the other end, you need to be aware that sliding doors don't close tightly. They don't have rubberized seals on them. And so in the winter time, if you're up north, you will get some wind that's going to kind of come through the cracks on that door. It's why sliding doors, split sliders or single sliders, they tend to be a little more utilitarian, a little more agricultural. Those are items you want to think through. What type of walk door do you want? Do you want a window in your door? Do you want a, just a standard smooth door? Do you want a raised panel door? All of that's going to play into the aesthetic. Do you want grid in your window? You can get your soffit vented, non-vented. If you're looking for free light because you may not run electric to your barn and have shop lights, you can do your ridge cap right down the center of the building. You can make it clear and gain free light. So those are things that you're going to want to think through as you're having the conversation. Okay. So the third thing I want you to think through is the future of your building. You may have a limited amount of money going into the project. And so you want to get started. However, maybe you just built your home and you're thinking through the stages of your kids, what their ages are. Are they going to be moving out where you may be 10 years from now? The cool thing is you can accessorize your barn. You can actually add on to it, make some modifications to it as your financial situation changes. And so you want to be careful when you do the initial build, 
do the things that are important right then during the build and then think through what you might want to do later. On a basic barn, you may say, I just need the shell because I got a bunch of stuff. I need to keep it out of the weather. That's totally fine. If you don't have the money for concrete, do concrete next year or do concrete in five years. Nothing wrong with having a gravel floor in your building. However, there's a handful of items you really want to think through. You don't want to put windows in later. It is a pain in the butt. You have to pull the whole sheet of metal off. You don't necessarily want to cut doors in later on. It's a lot easier when a crew's on the ground, put the windows in, put the doors in. If you think in the future you're going to put a loft inside, why not have the guys while they're there spend the extra $200 and put a couple upper level windows in your building? I listen to these phone calls all the time and people will process, will they eventually be buying a larger vehicle? Um, they look at the stage of their life and they consider, am I going to want to purchase an RV or a camper? So you'll be really upset if you build a 12 foot building, but you actually wind up needing a 16 foot building. And here's a little secret. It's a lot cheaper to build your building taller than it is to build it wider. So you can bump that building up from 12 to 16 foot, put that 14 foot door in there and have room later on. So the things you wanna do right now, your windows, your doors, you wanna add house wrap to the building. Tyvek is what most people see it as, but that real small membrane that goes on the back side of the metal. The reason you wanna do it now when you build, because five years from now, you think you're gonna insulate because you wanna turn it into a nice shop. You do not wanna put your spray foam directly onto the metal. You want to have that protective barrier of the house wrap to then spray foam directly onto the house wrap. Do it while you build the barn the first time. In the springtime, it goes from warm to cool or, or cool at night and then the sun comes out and we experience this issue of sweating. Basically, the roof of your pole barn, if it's just a metal roof, it actually will drip water. So people use a vapor barrier that they attach to it. You're not gonna wanna do that later. Just spend the few hundred dollars right now and do it right the first time or else it's gonna be a pain later on to make those adjustments. What you can do later as you're budgeting out, you can do your concrete work later if you need to. You can do your all your, obviously your interior framework, all of your insulation, all of your liner panel if you want your walls to be finished inside. That's all stuff that can come in the future. But you just need to think it through. What, where are you gonna be five years or 10 years from now? Are you gonna give the property to your children? Are your grandkids going to be enjoying this? Is this a legacy that you're leaving? Or is it just a big box that you're building to hold your stuff? You know, that's, that's a question you need to answer. So anyway, hope that helps. Hey, I hope you guys found the information to be helpful. Again, just really consider the footprint of your building. Where's it gonna fit in your yard? Um, consider the features of the building. Go through the details. Get the building that you want. Make it nice. And really consider the future. How is your building gonna grow with you? How will it potentially morph over time? And how are you gonna interact with that space? So we really hope you learned something. We hope you enjoyed it.